Okay, another one of Linus out of the box. And we're going to look at Debian 13. It's literally just been released. Now, same machine as usual. Um, the uh, Radon RX 960XT on a Ryzen 9. Now, I'll go through this in a minute. Like Debian's sort of like a, the grand, one of the grandfathers of a lot of the Linux distributions that are out there. And so it's like, you know, the source. I mean, but remember what this test is about. Okay, this is like a user, Windows, Mac person using it. Not a test, but it's like, and you want to just play a game, you want to do some word processing, you want to do something probably creative. So here we go. So in this really bad graph I've made, you can see on the left, Debian, Red Hat, Slackware, Arch, and Gen 2. These are like the originators of, from Linux Torvald's kernel that he made. And you can see Debian's right at the back there. And from Debian, uh, Untabun, Linux, Mint, and Pop OS, they're based on this. And then the others, Red Hat, you've got Fedora, CentOS, Alma Linux, and Rocky Linux. They're all based off of Red Hat. And with Slackware, you've got SUS Linux. Then you've got SUS Linux Enterprise OpenSUSE, which I saw another video. You've got, then you've got later on came Arch Linux, Manjaro, and Endeavor, and Catchy. And then Gen, the word one at the bottom is, which I've not done and I may play with, is Gen 2, which is basically the fundamental basis of Chrome OS, which is which is an oddity. Never knew that. But anyway, you learn something new. So you can see Debian's like right at the beginning. It's one of the source distributions for a lot of a lot of distributions today. So here yeah, on Vento, I've got so many um things. Now I'm using it the live installer. I don't recommend using the download ISO for a bizarre reason, because it basically doesn't install any um any um, repositories, but you end up not having anywhere to get software from. So we're going to use this and uh, just boot it up. Okay, so English, uh, United Kingdom, yep, these are hard questions. British, yep, that's me. Um, detect a mount installation media. Okay, waiting. What's going on there? When it's off, yeah, so this is the downloaded on the front, it's like a net, it's going to pull everything from the cloud. And I did try this with the, um, the Plasma version from the ISO, and it it, uh, it it like it locks you off from any repositories to install software. Okay, so it's done like, I need to do the hardwired connection, or you could obviously choose um, the Wi-Fi. Waiting for a link, there's a lot of information here. It's not really the slickest installer, is it, that we've seen? But when you do the KDE version, I still get a host name, needs a host name, okay? Needs a .NET name, make up anything. So we'll call it, I don't know. It's often something that ends up, if you're setting up a home network, you need to make up something, but make sure you use the same domain for all your computers. Be interesting. 28.com, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Continue configuring network. Now, the second bit here, alternative, you can look for it. So if you don't bleed this blank, and then the user, whatever user can run run admin passwords, you know, admin commands. So I'm using some really strong passwords here. Yeah. Yeah, no one's going to guess one letter. Configuring the clock, detecting disks, and partition. Is that partition? Is that even a word? And then I want to do, I don't want to use that um, because I'm going to write over a drive. So use entire disk, guided entire. So I want the Samsung. And then I want all files in one partition. Yep. I'll do that. Oops, a lot of information. Don't need to know that. It's going to kill the drive and overwrite its stuff. Great. Boom. Installing base system. Off it goes. So, yeah. So. Everything's based off Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, all this sort of stuff's based off this. But I did try and install the, the Plasma from the ISO. And that gives you a much better installer than this. This gives you a, it gives you a much better installer, even though it didn't work, because it, it basically, you open up the software shop and there's no sources attached. So you're supposed to run it like a live CD, I think, not, not install it from that. Okay, so Package Manager, UK, and use Debian is a good choice, okay? Archive mirror, out. no, no, no. So that's where it's going to pull all the stuff down from. I should have used the UK one, should I really? That'd probably be the best one to choose. I don't proxies. God, I can see that. Windows used to do a lot of proxy things, didn't it? Don't do that. 
if you're going apt, upgrading software, retrieving one of two files. So what I'm going to try and do on this, I am going to try and install the Plasma desktop. I like that. I don't like the GNOME desktop. It annoys me intensely with the key thing. Um, I don't know why. It's just not right. Some people are going to kill me for this. Right. So what does it say? Running your... The, we could probably plot time to come re call this system a nominous supply information. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. That's actually useful to give information to Linux developers because they're actually going to use it to improve the software and not sell me pants or whatever and remarket my data, I'd imagine. Strange that. Strange that you trust the Linux developers, but you don't trust Microsoft or even Mac, to tell you the truth, what they're doing with your data. So I'm obviously pausing here to have a very long read of what this is saying. Choose for participant automatic submission scripts will run once a week. Sending statistics to the distribution developers will be viewed. You can see it in the public what the machines do probably what, um, you know, that's actually quite cool. So yeah, they can have it. Definitely. Continue. So there's information you want. Oh, here we go. So desktop environment. I want plasma. KDE plasma. Don't want that. Want that. That's cool. OK. And standard system utilities. And you can obviously launch it as a web server from here. And this is obviously built from lots of, you know, it's a universal installation. So what we'll do is we'll speed this up 3,000 times. Because that one minute remaining just lies to you. It's just lying to me. It was one minute remaining for about 10 minutes. And then, OK. And then... Off it goes. Oh, we've got a failing. What's going on? Install step failed. You can try and run. Make it or skip it and choose something else. The failing step is select and install software. OK. Continue. Let's try that again. Uh, try that again. Thanks for um, What about applying updates on a frequent basis is an important part. Yeah, let's do security updates. I wonder why this asked me there. Why is that? Why has it failed and done that? Running, hang on, I'm back where I was before with this, aren't I? This is earlier on. Tasks are, oh, here we go. All right, I'll leave it on GNOME. I'll leave it on GNOME. I bet you that's what's gone wrong. Maybe I could do two at once. Can I put Plasma on there at the same time? It's not what you'd normally do, is it? If you were like coming from Windows, this is probably going to confuse. No, I think I should I take that off. Let's try and just get through this and put GNOME on there, I think. Yeah. And let's see what happens. Let's do like the default vanilla installation. Continue. And up it goes. And it's going to zip along really quick. Yep, we might have sped that up. That's not real time. And we're going to go into a reboot. Continue. So GNOME. Oh, right. Okay. So not the most user friendly in um, installation. As I said, if we need to try it with Plasma, I'll probably do it with a GNOME installation from the from the CD, the ISO. It's a much better installer, but that didn't work. So here we are, Debian 16.12, 6.12. And up it comes. It's just, as you see how, if you look at the one for OpenSUSE, how slick and polished the installer and pop and what else was good? Bazai. They're really slick installers. They're much more user friendly. Oh, I don't want that. I do not want to do. Then here we go. Now. OK, I couldn't figure this out on Fedora or whatever it is. You have to press the Windows key or something instead of having to go up to the top left to click that thing to get your taskbar up. OK, let's see what's in the store. So what we want to do is on OBS, Steam, and I might put an AI on here as well. I'll put Alpaca on here if I can get it to go. Um, but when I did this on the Plasma install, there was nothing here. So I'm hoping, OK, we've got some software. This is the thing. This is the annoying part with all they need to do to get Linux to be more acceptable is do good software installation shops so people can get their stuff and make installing it easy. And then literally this is the two, her, two biggest hurdles for going through all the installations I've installed. OBS is going on. These are the falling down points. 
let me install the software and let me install the operating system in an easy and easy way and you know you'd have a lot more people coming over steam no steam oh god right okay that's probably going to be like some kind of i mean i've had it before i've spelt it not spelt it wrong. it's just not picked it up it's been there so if i look around what we've got we've got some stuff jesus yeah, I mean, I know, you know, the developers are probably not even thinking of these use cases for these things. And I know that Debian doesn't have driver managers. And this is why there's derivatives of it, like Mint and Ubuntu and Pop, because people have got this. It's a brilliant foundation, but it's not really um, good enough. Not good enough. It is good enough. It's great software. It's not... Um, usable for the normal user you'd have to do a lot of hoops i'm going to end up in terminal shortly i can feel it and you shouldn't have to you should literally be able to do um you know install it point and click download your bits not do any hacks and then get to work i mean some os is a very so there's some which are pretty close to doing that now i mean like vasai i don't really have to do much with stuff once you've got it installed you don't need to do anything well so it's a really good install manjaro is pretty cool um catchy the store's not right if catchy os's store was was spot on that would be amazing and zeus was open zeus was really good i was impressed by that that was totally came out of nowhere um that was like really solid everything went in and it was a, anything apart from the thing called se linux it would have worked so here we go I'm, I'm now googling it's the this is why you can't even get an ai on here um if you download an ai you can chat to then you can ask it questions about your operating system every linux install should come with an ai built in See, so here we go. So first answer on Google is, on a Debian system, apt install Steam. That's it, let's do that. Now, I'm being a normal person, and I'm just, this is what I'm gonna do. So I need to open up Terminal, and we've immediate fail on opening Terminal, and then paste, sudo app Steam, password is that. Steam, yeah, okay, yeah. So, I, I'm obviously well, I've done a few of these in my fail people have written in the comments and they've said well you need to do this that's not the point of the exercise I if I can't you know imagine I don't know anything about computers I'm sure I can get steam on it I'm sure I'm gonna have to add a lot of repositories all this sort of stuff but that's not the point is it you want an installation that's like you know at the beginning you should have asked me what do I want to do do I want to do x I mean, it's just a be a web server I mean I've got look I've got um I could type some notes what can I say not great there you go so i mean you know it's simple someone just needs to build the install at the front end that asks you a few questions about what you want to do with it and then set it up so obs let's have a look see what that's got next yeah they're too focused some of these are too focused it's it's just like you know opening up for the public you want to do multimedia do you want to play games okay even some of them have this screen that tells they can install games and you can't run steam so it's like what are you doing there, there's some innate knowledge there should be um a lot more info on these they're getting there though i mean i'm not knocking it. i think bazite's phenomenal and it's a game changer because it's allowing people to actually look think there's a viable op opposite you know thing that they can do to play games they don't need to do it on and steam os is really the thing is the key to the future get that thing going you can you know once that operates goes on other people's software on nvidia and everything natively it's game on quite literally that's not a pun and yeah so that works okay what else can we do in here um not much else really settings have a quick look around settings um pretty if you're if you've used gnome before i mean or any operating system you've got all the same stuff it can adjust your environment software says up to date installed i'm still i'm still i'm still holding out for steam being somewhere so i can actually install a game on this but that's not going to happen is it so yeah debian debian 13 it's the, the grandfather the the but you know granddad doesn't want you to play games there's that stupid button i mean yeah i think from this you know it, derivatives and everything come out of it but that's a shame. I was hoping that a bit more from that, but I'm sure it's rock solid stuff where and it's a rock solid OS and it's amazing. But there you go. So great 
but uh, not so great. So anyway, as again, thanks for watching.